I'm wondering if you could just maybe we could just start uh, with you telling us a little bit about your book. Is it a, a memoir of your time in government? Is it a, a treatise on economic policy? A little bit of both. Well, I, I do want to start, Theo, you know, by uh, thanking you for having me on. You're right. I haven't uh, spent a lot of time in the media over the last two years. And uh, I can tell you, it's been nice to be in private life and not uh, spend the time out uh, in the media. But I will say that among the people that I always enjoyed spending time with, you were one of them because you always focused on economic issues and uh, got to the heart of, of what was really important. Um, so my book, uh, it is exactly as you said, it is, it's a combination of talking about my experiences in public life, uh, so uh, somewhat memoir-based, but really, my observations about what we need to think about as a country moving forward to ensure that we continue to have the kind of prosperity that we know that we need to have in order to help the next generation to have the same increasing standard of living that uh, that our generation had. I mean, it, you gave a speech uh, in, uh, I think, June 1st uh, that kind of hinted at some of those ideas. And what I found interesting in that speech is how you distinct distinguished between, uh, you know, the, the what needs to be done versus the how things get done. These, and, you, and you mentioned how uh, looking at just the what needs to get done uh, without looking at the how is a bit of a navel-gazing exercise. So, I mean, how do things get done in Ottawa that prevent uh, politicians from uh, tackling these long-term challenges, which is, uh, uh, you know, which was uh, essentially the, the main message in that speech. Well, it was the main message. I mean, the the what I talked about in that speech was a bit of my own experience, but uh, not only what we achieved during the time I was in office, but the things that we weren't able to achieve, and that that in in a great part is because politics is difficult. I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know. It's getting more difficult with uh, polarization in our society. Uh, so the focus on the long term becomes even more challenging than it has been over the, the course of the last decades. What I, I said then, and certainly what I'm going to be focusing on in my book, is, is that how matters. I mean, we, we were very successful in a previous generation when we decided to uh, make the Bank of Canada independent from politics. It allowed the bank to focus on long-term issues, on long-term monetary policy. And uh, that is, you know, that is one of the things we need to think about. How do we help uh, politicians to be more successful? Uh, I think that one of the key things we need to be focused on is relationships. The relationships in Canada between the federal government and the provincial government are the route to so many of the um, potential solutions that we need to find, certainly in healthcare, in the energy transition, uh, and even in small irritants like like uh, internal trade, we need to be focused on those relationships if we're going to be successful in creating prosperity. I mean, what's preventing uh, politicians, the political parties, from doing this now? I mean, what is what is blocking uh, you know uh, smart public policy from being made in this country? Among the things that, that I think are important is, is obviously recruiting uh, capable people to get into public life. I think, you know, I'm always going to encourage people to think about it as a place where you can make an enormous difference. But we need to recognize that's a challenge because the, the challenges of public life are, are, are not trivial, especially in, a, in an era where uh, we have social media and uh, a lot of personal criticism. So, so it's not easy, uh, and it's uh, not easy where you have a tendency towards worrying about uh, dealing with the, the news cycle. The news cycle is ever faster, as you know better than I do, and that does uh, take people's eye off those long-term issues. From my perspective, I think focus becomes critically important. Uh, one of the uh, things that I always said around the table when I was around the table as, uh, as Minister of Finance was we needed to focus on those few important things that could make a sustained difference for us over the long term. But it is difficult to do, and, and it's, not a, it's not a criticism of this government. It's an observation of the challenges of government today. Are you optimistic that uh, people will come forward uh, with uh, maybe less polarizing talk and more uh, concrete policy solutions? And do you think voters will be able to be convinced to focus on the long term as well? Because that's the other element here. I mean, voters are drawn maybe uh, to, to 
politicians who may not have uh, more, um, you know, uh, longer term policy solutions. Well, we're, you know, we're at a time in the cycle where we're we're spending our time because we've just gone through some, you know, the conservative leadership where we're, we're talking about politics. But it is important to recognize that, uh, you know, a, a week in politics can be a long time, as people often say. So I, I remain an optimist in the face of those challenges. I think that what we are going to see the next generation think about is their need to provide for themselves and their families, just like the past generation did. So uh, there will be difficult moments. Certainly, uh, we've we've seen uh, some of them. You know, over the time I was in office, we had lots of challenges. COVID was was an obvious one, but we had some uh, significant challenges in dealing with the United States. Uh, we have an ongoing challenge with the energy transition, with very uh, different perspectives, and uh, those things are tough to get over. But I I'm optimistic we will. Um, you, in, in that speech, you also claim that um, uh, the Trudeau government, uh, your government at the time when you were in that government, paid little attention to the growth agenda. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I covered you from from the very beginning. You were talking about growth practically. You know, um, every speech, every interview, um, essentially, you were talking about getting that growth rate higher. I mean, what went wrong? What would you have done differently, uh, knowing what you know now? How would you? If you could go back in time, how would you make that, uh, how things get done more more effective for you? Well, I think the place we have to start, and it's, it's consistent with having an optimistic point of view, is we need to point out the positives. I mean, much was done during the time I was in office that made a big difference. So the, the uh, Canada Child Benefit took you know, took our poverty level among children down significantly. The Canada Pension Plan expansions going to make a big difference for people in the future. Carbon pricing is an important change that I think will help us to, to figure out how to get through the energy transition. These are really important issues that we faced up to. Uh, one of the big issues, however, is that when you're facing up to those issues, plus the inbound issues, inbound issues like, you know, we had to deal with the Trans Mountain Pipeline issue. We had to deal with the renegotiation of NAFTA. It is challenging to maintain focus, and that is exactly what you need to do. Focus on, you know, what are the regulatory and tax and other issues that make investment less likely in our country, and how can we deal with those? How can we attract investment that's going to enable growth over the long term? So, yes, there was, uh, there was commentary on the need to focus, and I would just say again that that, uh, as you mentioned, it's not something new from my perspective. It's it's just a reality that that is a hard thing to do. It's critically important for you know for anybody managing anything to think about what are the big things that need to be achieved, focus on them, and do that over a sustained time period. Um, you you uh, obviously were uh, the, this government's first finance minister uh, for five years of uh, non-crisis. Uh, 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 fiscal and economic management, even though I guess the NAFTA renegotiation uh, could be uh, thought of as a crisis situation. Um, how would you describe your, your looking back over the last uh, five, uh, the first, well, the five years um, as finance minister, how would you look back at your record and, and, and characterize it? Well, first, it's an enormous privilege having the uh, responsibility to be finance minister. It's an intense and a difficult job, uh, and one that I enjoyed enormously. I mean, not all aspects of it, of course, because you know it's it's not always fun to go out to restaurants when people want to talk to you about tax rates. But uh, but the actual job is uh, incredibly engaging and an opportunity to make a make a big difference. the The times of tension were uh, were both challenging and in many cases came out well. So I think. When we look at, uh, for example, the Trans Mountain Pipeline, I mean, that was a big challenge between two provinces. We didn't have in our agenda to buy a pipeline, but in my estimation, we needed to figure out a way to ensure that our resources could get to international markets. So that was an outcome that was, I think, positive for the long-term health of our economy and, and will help us in our energy transition. Similarly, NAFTA, we didn't ask to have NAFTA renegotiated. But um, you know, credit is due to the prime minister in that regard. We were very focused on our relationships with the United States over a sustained period as we got through that. 
and uh, found ourselves in a, you know, in a better position, I think, than we would have been had we not had to go through that tough time. COVID, similarly, you know, we can debate the size and the duration of the benefits that we gave to people and to firms. But what we can't debate is that, uh, you know, again, the Prime Minister here deserves credit, and I agreed with him completely that we, we needed to provide significant support to people and to firms as they faced, you know, a, a huge challenge. So in those times of crisis, I think we performed well, uh, not perfectly, no government does, and uh, certainly I have constructive criticisms against that. But I think that there were, on balance, um, dealing with those issues was, was successful. Uh, the challenge, as I say, moving forward is to constantly be focused on how do we think about increasing our productivity as a country? How do we ensure that we're investing towards growth? I mean, a step in the right direction is the immigration uh, approach that's been taken by the Trudeau government. That's, in my estimation, again, the right decision for the long term. And you saw uh, most recently numbers coming out talking about the uh, significant increase in immigration over the time that uh, the Liberal government has been in power. And I think that's a positive for the long term. We need to build on that. Um, why did you leave? Well, five years as, as finance minister is a long time, uh, and it, uh, it is obviously one that has uh, lots of uh, stresses and challenges. Um, you know, at, at the uh, time when we were facing through COVID, we, we did agree on, on the importance of supporting people, and we, you know, we worked through some, some pretty tough issues. But in the end, um, you know, the, the details and the dynamics uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave and, and encourage you to read my book to talk about uh, to talk about those details and dynamics. Suffice it to say, I'm I am very happy to have had the privilege of being finance minister, and uh, five years was a long time. Uh, and I, I do hope that uh, that the government and the next government after that focus on how we can increase our productivity, focus on how we can increase our growth, so that uh, the next generation can have the same benefits that we've had. You mentioned that uh, there could, you know, you, there, we could debate whether uh, the, the size or the scope of the, of the pandemic support programs were, were too large. Do you believe that they were too large uh, now in hindsight, given where inflation is right now? Uh, you're looking back, um, uh, you know, was it just too much? The, uh, you know, the, the issue for, uh, for all governments was to try to figure out how to calibrate it. Uh, I, I and the team at finance spent uh, a lot of time trying to do the analysis to get to our our conclusions that would be uh, most well suited for the for the issue. Uh, we weren't alone. The United States was doing the same thing. So so we you know we've uh, in hindsight, I think that some people would say that there are uh, there are always things that we could have done differently. But I think again, going up to big picture, did we support people at the right time? Uh, yes, we did. And did we ensure that our economy could continue to move forward? Yes, we did. So I think that the um, the things I would say most importantly are that we got through this in a good way. I think Canada fared well, and uh, I think we should be proud of that. Um, last question, running out of time, but it's 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 rare today for Canadian executives to do what you did, which was to you know make a leap uh, into federal politics. You know. Now that you you're reflecting about uh, upon your own experience, would you encourage uh, executives to follow your footsteps, or would you dissuade them? Well, I I obviously I am very concerned about the long term future of our country. So I I think that getting experienced people who have an understanding of how the economy works, of how business works, is critically important. So I would encourage them. I would also say that you need to understand that it's a challenging job. But with, with any place that you can have a big impact, there are going to be challenges. So um, I'm going to always be in the, in the camp of trying to get great people to get into public life because that's going to make a, a big long-term difference.